get right to it. Open your Bible to Deuteronomy. Or actually, Exodus 20. Sorry for you. Exodus 20. I'm going to start reading there in verse 4. It says, You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water underneath the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children on the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. Wow. Fathers, God put the onus on you. Men of the church, the Bible doesn't beat around the bush. A thousand generations can be affected by a man who serves the Lord. I am not up here by accident. I'm up here because God brought me up here. When I was growing up, the last place I ever thought I would be is behind the pulpit. Because I had no interest in ever being a preacher. But my grandfather is a genealogist. And as you look back through the whole line, there's preacher after preacher after preacher on both sides of that genealogy tree. That's a calling of God. Not my choice. God's calling. But God calls every Father and every man of God to honor and worship Him and Him alone. Nothing else. No one else. It is God's way and no other way works. God's plan, and the Word of God make that, makes that very clear, is that He sent Jesus Christ, who is God, as a man. He was born of a virgin. And God came to earth in human form, lived a sinless life, went to the cross, was crucified, which the Roman government even verified. History verifies that fact. And he rose again. Hundreds verified that fact. The lives of those that knew him and the way they sacrificed their lives is the fact that God is Jesus Christ in man form. And He came back to life defeating death, defeating sin. And He did it for you. Each and every one of you. And you have a choice. Believe in Him and be saved. Or don't and spend eternity in hell. That's what it comes down to. You can beat around the bush a dozen different ways. But right here, God puts the onus on you, not just for that, but for the way you're living your life.
the way you conduct yourself, the way you teach your children. You figure that out, the third and fourth generations, that would be your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and your great-great-grandchildren are affected by what you do. If you don't live for the Lord, they are affected by it. Now, they can break that chain if they decide they want to serve the Lord. But the sins of the Father carry on to the third and fourth generations. You may say, well, that's not fair. That's what God created us. That's the way it is. You look back through a family that has different struggles with different things. If a father is a drug addict and dealing in drugs, it'll affect the children and it'll affect those children's children and what they believe is right and what they believe is wrong to do. Listen sometimes when you hear people talk. I was talking to a man just yesterday who shared his dad was a heavy drinker. His dad dealt in some taking some different drugs. And he was not mocking it. He was talking about it in proud terms, laughing about some of the things his dad had done. He has the same problems his dad did. And you know what? So does Grandpa. The sins of the Father were passed on. I wish I could stand here and say it ain't so, but it is. God's Word says it is. Now, maybe you say, well, I don't have a chance in my dad. Was not a man who served the Lord. We each make our own decision on serving God. He has given us that free will. He will let us spend our lives how we want to. If we don't want to serve Him, He'll let us. But the sad thing is, people don't stop to think about where that spends eternity. And the effect that has on um, I was actually, when I was looking at what, what I was going to talk about, I was going to talk about some different ways a father affects the kids. And I came to this verse and, and I thought, you know, this is how the father affects the kids most. What are you teaching your children? What are you teaching your grandchildren? What are you teaching your great-grandchildren? Where are you at in your own life? Are you walking with the Lord? Are you living for the Lord? Are you just coming on Sundays? You know what? Each and every day that we get up is a gift from God. One thing Ron Johnson shared with me, and I've said it at many a funeral. He said, you know, Don, God was there when I took my first breath. God's going to be there when I took my last, take my last breath. And too many of us don't realize that. We just take all the breaths and do with what we want to in between. But God's very clear. Men of God can affect their family line. What's that say? Let's read that. But showing loving kindness 
to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. Do you love the Lord? Is your love showing up in the way you live your life? Because that's how it affects your kids, your grandkids. If you've got a question about how you're living your life, go to the Word of God. It'll teach you. Go to Proverbs. Read through Proverbs and just the Proverbs that it talks about for a dad or a mother or a child. And as I've said, as a church family, that would include every one of us here, how it affects those around you that see you. It's not just always the kids. As a man of God, what do you talk about with the men of the church? Do you check and see how they're walking for the Lord? Do you sharpen each other up? The Bible says iron sharpens iron. That's the way two Christian men should be. If you never talk about the Lord outside of the church with each other, then you're not helping each other out. Same with the women. I know women can talk. Are you sharpening each other up by sharing where you're at in the walk with the Lord? Are the older women that have experienced things in life sharing with the younger women? Are the older men who have experienced things in life sharing with the younger men? Because that's huge. Every church in Shenandoah has changed from where it used to be 20 years ago. 40 years ago. And that's because the men of God aren't taking the stands that they need to take. It's not me putting the onus on. It's God. It says it right here. Hold yourselves accountable. But also hold each other accountable, man. In the way God would have you hold it. Holding them accountable is not just sharing with everybody else what they're doing. But it's going to each other and helping each other when you struggle in your walk. Helping each other when you're having joy. Helping each other any opportunity you have. This is an awesome family. It's an awesome church family. And God loves each and every one of you. So as we go forward through this summer, let's spend some time sharpening each other up. Fellowshipping, sharing. Don't just take the summer off from the Lord. I know some churches have stopped their Bible studies. We just chatted about that on Wednesday night. I'm not going to stop it. I'm going to keep Wednesday night. Somebody will be in there to teach. I don't even think we teach. We just chat. We don't really have a teach. Just more chat about the Word of God. Same on Sunday morning. Come on into Sunday school. Hear what God's got to say. Come to the words of words. Hear what God's got to say. Come to the fellowship time. And not because you want to click something off your little checklist of doing it for the Lord, but because you love God and you want to keep His commandments. And one of those commandments is to love others as you love yourself. Do you love others as you love yourself?
Let's bow our heads. And uh, I'm just going to give everybody, it's going to be about two minutes of silent prayer. And I'll say amen. And we'll, if the girls will come up after that, we'll close out. Amen. If we could have girls come down, and uh, if anybody feels led today, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, 